I thought there was a need to develop more players versus just the, the 32 I was working with at the provincial level. Okay? The last year I was there, I was given I think it was 120 players. And I had to make one squad of that to the national championship. So I cut a lot, of, a lot of quality players. And the question they had for me, which is a great question, was how do I get back in the program? How do I become better? At that point, I had no answer to that because we had provincial level and we had clubs. So the players went back to their club level and not getting quality coaching. Okay, so that's why I kind of um, had the idea of setting my own, my own academy, private academy, and getting started with that. Okay? And my goal really was, my measuring stick was, can I develop some players in Canada who would be good enough to go to the UK? And I started that company back in 2000, and I just had last year we had two players over in the UK, so it took 14 years. So player development is long term. And as coaches, we're very patient with that. Okay? Um, I did have a player in 2000 with Seville and Spain for a trial as well. And again, from our point of view, uh, we took a 14 year old player over to, to Spain in the year 2000, um, sorry, 2010. And uh, the feedback of the player was they were very good attacking them. So Spain, as you know, have won some World Cups, European Championships, known for technical skills. We, a young player from Canada, went there and did very well attacking them. So we're very pleased with that. So players in North America can compete. Um, this, is a, this is a big one for me. Okay? This is something we, we lose track of a little bit. It's a, it's, a, it's a kid's sport. A sport is their fun time. Okay? When I was growing up in Northern Ireland, I was dropped off a uh, minibus on a Saturday morning at the park. I saw my parents maybe 7 o'clock at night. I went my teammates on a minibus, I played my game, came home. It was actually one, one weekend. It was quite funny. I actually, uh, First time I had to score two goals in the same game. It never really happened to me, but I did that. Came home, uh, went to grandma's house, had a bowl of Irish stew, went to watch a game in the afternoon. The following week, um, many was in the paper scoring two goals. I hadn't told anybody, because to me it was just, that was my game time. I'm play my game and get on with it, right? So, different nowadays, different nowadays, right? The parents drive the kids to training, the parents are at the games, parents are watching the games, the parents are making sure the kids are doing okay. It's, it's a different, different environment, okay? For me, it was hard to recognize that. It was hard to understand that a little bit. I came from a different world. Okay? So the last 14 years, I'm trying to understand a little bit and understanding, yeah, we have more of a helicopter type parent situation in North America. Okay? So as a coach, I have to adapt to that. Okay? That's, that's my environment now. Okay? Different than what I first grew up, but as a coach, I have to adapt to that. I can't sort of say, this is not how I'm going to do things. I have to be very aware that coach, uh, the parents have to be informed what's happening. You, know? you have to buy into what I'm doing. If you don't, I can't do my job properly. Again, uh, learn, kids learn different rates. Okay? Um, George Bass is probably the most famous player from North America, well before your time. But he grew up in, uh, in Belfast, became one of the best players in the world. Okay? And it's interesting because at age 14, he was turned down by some Irish league teams in Belfast. He's too small. Right? Within three years, he's been much United. Okay? In six years, he's probably Europe's best player. So players develop at different rates. Okay? Everyone's heard of uh, Lionel Messi, right? He went to um, Spain at age 13, okay? And went through the whole system in, in their academy. There was coaches in Barcelona up to the age 18, 19. They weren't quite sure if he's good enough. Okay? So again, too small, he couldn't do this, he couldn't do that. Okay? So you can't really tell. You can't really tell. As coaches, you get very open to, to what is possible, as opposed to sort of say, this player can't do this, right? Right now, you can't tell what's going to happen in a couple of years. Kids develop different different rates. You guys all develop different rates, right? Academically or whatever, right? Okay. Uh, Christian Allen versus Wayne Rooney. Um, I find this interesting because Ronaldo came to my United. I was kind of unknown a little bit, very young. Rooney was a star there, but he'd be bought from Everton. Okay. I think when uh, Ronaldo went there, pretty similar in terms of the ability, I think. But what's happened last the last 10 years? Rudy is a mm -hmm. good player, but Ronaldo's not the best player in the world. Right? And what happened, I think, is this. I think in the UK, Rudy was built up so much. Right? He was the best player um, of his generation in the UK. So I think part of that, he stopped learning a little bit. That's my own theory of that. Ronaldo was the one out running on the track after, this, after the training was finished. And Alex Ferguson talks a lot about how hard he worked as a player. Okay, he was the one I'd like practicing free kicks. He was the one I after the session doing the extra work. Okay? He's got his reward, right? 
We also look upon him and his diving, this and that. We know he's a very hard working player. Very hard working. Okay. Um, there's a lot of pressure on players. Right? That's the biggest thing I find in my cabin. A lot of pressure on players. A lot of pressure on kids regarding academics as well at school. Right? So the biggest thing we try to do as coaches is take that pressure away from them. Okay? Uh, and make sure that they, they come to our session at night, uh, train a few times a week. It's a fun time. It's game time for them. It's fun. It's playing time. Okay? As opposed to come in and say this, this, and this. Okay? Because they get that all day long. Right? All day long. Uh, we have a lot of parents actually who watch our sessions. Um, and a few years ago, actually, when I had a six month period where I actually banned the parents from, yeah. from watching the sessions. To sort of see how the reaction was. Uh, I was having some parents who were very vocal in the sideline regarding training, for example. I saw I had some players who, performance wise, went done because their parents were there, because of the pressure on them all the time. I've had players on the field playing and looking over at the bench, their mom and dad, and seeing what, what's the reaction there. Okay, so I want to give players the opportunity in the environment to develop themselves. Okay? I had a funny story once where a parent came, he actually was one of the problem parents. He asked me, where can I watch this session from? And I said, Starbucks. <laughs> he thought I was joking, I said, no, I'm Starbucks. So I was, I was very serious about it because um, same thing, there's so much pressure on his children. They had two kids, in fact, and, and I find this a little bit, uh, I've come across quite a lot, where we have two players in our program, I find a lot, it happens a lot, where our, parent, our parents, Will have will choose one one kid or the other. I think it's more potential it's one child versus our child. I've had that happen a lot, where they have discussions about the one child. Maybe it's the youngest one, and they think that's a better chance of making whatever that means, right? So I find that quite a bit, right? So it's important to treat other players the same way. I think the same way. Any questions? Five bunch. Okay. Um, I'm quite passionate this one. Okay, like I mentioned to you, um, people sort of assume because I've a high license that I want to win every game. And like I mentioned to you, I was I was coach of the province. I expected Ontario was the biggest province in Canada. I expected one of my games. So we played against Quebec. I was expected in those games. Okay, the fact that we did right. But that's a different kind of pressure to coach because I coached I coached a different way. <coughs> right. I went out to try to make sure we won our games. Okay. I've got a good friend of mine who actually ended up uh, the same kind of philosophy, actually with my assistant in the provincial program. Uh, got a job as a club coach, and we have the same kind of philosophies. And uh, I called him after a couple of weeks and I said, How's it going? He said, I'm just trying to coach to survive in this league. Because this league, even though the kids were so young, 12 and 13, they had promotion and relegation. So if they could relegate it, he'd lose his best players the following year. So he was coaching trying to win 1 0, 2 1, right? You can get a tie some games. So his coaching philosophy went out the window because of the, of the way the structure was. Just trying to hang on and win games. Okay? Didn't enjoy that at all. He wasn't developing players. These players are 12 and 13. They have to learn skills. They have to learn how to play properly, as opposed to how to win properly, or how to even tie games. That's something they can learn when they're 14, 15, 16, or getting paid for it. Right? A little bit different. Okay? Um, Again, we, we tend to find players early on, um, 9, 10, and 11. The tallest players are the players maybe the A team versus the B team. Okay? Um, when I was at Burlington, actually I found a girl who was 13, age 13 and 14. They had A, B, and C teams. I found a girl, one of the smallest players in the um, in, 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 in 14 back bracket. So I remember she was wearing bright red boots, she couldn't miss from the field. Playing for the C team, I said, why should the C team? Because she was tiny, right? In two years, she was playing the highest league in our province, right? Because she grew and developed, and, but she had the skill at that level. Was placed in the C team because she was small, right? And what tends to happen? The gap becomes bigger, right? Because the A team gets the best coaching staff, right? Mm -hmm. Versus the C team. So when you identify kids that young, and you say you're an A player and you're a B player. That's the first thing I tell you as a player. You're 10, someone's telling you you're not quite good enough, right? So you start believing that. Where's your confidence as a young player, right? You're gonna say, I'll try a different sport. I'll try wrestling, I'll try football, I'll try basketball, right? Because kids wanna be special, they the best they can be, right? Um, Canada's in Europe, and this is, this is amazing to me. I find more stress in Canada. We're at like 145th in the world. 
than I do when I go to UK. Okay? When Arsenal and Man play each other, two top teams in England, at the academy level, there's no scores cap. No one cares. Right? I have a lot of friends who work full time in academies in England. They're a good judge, uh, a judge upon the type of players you're bringing through, how we develop players. Wolves, for example, got a very good under 14 team. Half that team play at the U15 level because the players are that good. So if Wolves want to win games against Man City or Arsenal or Liverpool, they would keep those players U14. They don't. They want to push those players on a bit. Okay? So they take the um, long term view of things, okay? which is good. Again, just just Netflix, Crew Alexander, and uh, is there a thing, Crew? Uh, Crew Alexander, um, each each player will be given different goals for every game, okay? And I found there's actually we're given. So if they play a game in the academy, they start started the game left full back for 20 minutes, moved inside the midfield 20 minutes, back out to wing 20 minutes. So in the course of one game, they could have played three different positions, okay? The next game they may start center forward. Then other, other side of the wing. So in a couple of weeks, they played every position in the team. Okay, that's a learning experience. Okay, if you ask Craig or ask him to play in the UK, we all played different positions. I even played goals once. wasn't very good at it. <laughs> Didn't play again, <laughs> but played every position. And it gives you different different insight every game. Okay, so that's something again they do. If they want to win games. They would find their fastest player, tallest player, striker. That's all you do. We find this about our academy. Players will walk through and the go, he's a striker, right? I'd say, no, he's not, or she's not. The player, the player. I had examples where, again, I was coaching a provincial team. I had a player who was a so-called striker, which came in. I had um, two players end up playing nationally, national level for Canada, as strikers, right? I was picking, picking my squad, okay? There's no way she's gonna make us a striker. No way. Okay? I played a right fullback. If you can captain, captain the team, I want to get a scholarship. Okay, so if players not willing to play in positions, then they're giving up a lot going forward. You can't tell. Most players you see playing in UPL start somewhere else. Right? Ashley Cole is one of the best left fullbacks in England for many years. Started as a left winger at Arsenal. Okay, Gareth Bale started as a left fullback. That's at um, Southampton. Now he's playing for uh, Real Madrid. The midfield player forward. You can't tell. Okay, it's been very, very musicians. Okay. Um, I had a colleague in our academy actually who, who was coaching one of our teams, and he was purely team based. <coughs> right. In fact, one time he told me, "My entire team will go, will go and play for the province." And two players will play for the Canadian national team. Right? You can't tell that he's twelve. You just, just can't. Okay. So I saw his teams play. Um, a very, very good team. They played very well together. Okay, but if one of those players wasn't on the week, injured or whatever, that team fell apart. So what happens to those players when they go go for a trial somewhere? Say you're trying to see an MLS call a player and say, come in for a trial. All of a sudden, players getting used to new, new playing, playing style, new teammates, new coach. How do they adapt to that? They've had four or five years playing the same players. Difficult, right? What do you think about? If you can't handle, I told players, if you can't handle change in your life, you're going to struggle in sports. Because think about it, it doesn't matter what sport you play, different coaches, different teammates, you can be sold, traded somewhere else, across the country, right? If you can't handle change in your life, you're a hard time as a professional, professional uh, sports person. You really are, right? So it's important we teach them young to deal with situations, okay? I've got to say, I've got to say in my academy, deal with it, deal with it. I've had players say, my boss back. Deal with it, work it out. If it wasn't here, what happened? Work it out, right? And uh, I find this phenomenal a bit as well. The bottom part, um, parents become agents, right? The whole Jeremy McGuire thing. They become agents, right? And it's, it must be hard for um, the family dynamic as well to have your, your, your parents an agent, almost. Difficult, right? Difficult. Any questions? Okay, let's go. Um, a couple more examples. Um, our, probably our, our famous, our most famous player in Canada was Owen Hargreaves. He actually was developed in Calgary, uh, which is kind of a little part of our, our country. He came out came a British family, but grew up in Calgary. At 13, he went to Bayern Munich in Germany. 
They went from there, um, didn't know the language, didn't know anyone there, but I worked 13 and lived in Germany. And ended up going on to one European, uh, European Cup with, uh, with Bayern Munich. Okay. Ended up playing for Miami as well. Actually, second play for England in the World Cup. Was one of their better players that won the World Cups. Okay. And that was a player who, he could have easily said, a 13, I've made it. A top club in Europe signed me, I've made it. If I just keep my hands on work, I'll make it through. No, he didn't, right? Kept working hard, kept getting better and better, right? So he strived for it. Thank God's reward because of that, okay? We saw players today who, again, worked a couple of years, and they had a certain level, and that's it. They're happy with that. They're happy with that, okay? It'll be against Ronaldo versus Rooney. Rooney, we be content with that. It's the best time I had, content with that. Ronaldo wants to be the best in the world. Much more, much more different. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, let's finish this slide, I'll open up for, for questions. Um, I spent a lot of time doing futsal <coughs> last couple of years. Reason being, I find it, it's a very fast-paced game, and it teaches our players a lot regarding working, um, being very technical in small spaces, okay? And finding solutions, okay? As far as my basketball, it's transition. Okay, back and forth all the time. And a few, uh, two, two years ago, we actually played in a, uh, a league in Toronto. And I'm always very much a hands-on coach in the field. I'm coaching hands-on the players, helping as much as possible. I actually sat in the stands during the football game. And the parents were going, why are you sitting in the stands? Why aren't you giving the players direction? Why aren't you helping them during the games? And I had one game where we had a pretty, pretty tough game. And I went to change and I said to the players, okay, what, what do you think? Well, what can be a little better? Right? They give me a list of things. Right? And it was all buying off. The kids had all the answers. Right? They couldn't do it during the game. It's typical during the game, right? But they understood what the, what the issues were. That's important. Transfer responsibility to them. Because I can't go in the field and play for my players. Okay? I can't do that. I got a small enough to finish during the games. So the best thing I can do for them to help them is make sure they're set up during the week and go in cool situations. Okay? That's why we're trying to develop thinking players versus players who are robots and say, I want to play this way all the time. Okay? It's a big difference regarding coaching. Okay? I have more slides, but I want to open up this in the last 10 minutes with some questions. I'll go for that. We get interactive. Anyone ask me? Yes? You see yourself as more of like a strict kind of like disciplinary type of coach or more like a players coach or like a player coach? I'm not, I'm not friends with them. <laughs> I have a good relationship with my, 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 my players, actually. Um, but very much like European, uh, very old school in terms of like you come in. We work together. It definitely has changed. It, I'm very much, I'm not like do this, do that. Uh, I think it's more a guided discovery um, now where we work together to solve the problems in the field. But I have you on certain standards regarding respect, like I mentioned, regarding shaking hands, things like that. Um, players, you know, messing about during the sessions, like it's pretty, pretty fast. So. I definitely have the environment where it's, it's set up. I have a good sense of humor, so I enjoy the players, but once in a while I go to your side, I'll say, hey, I'll just stop it and kind of nip it a little bit, right? Um, so I think it's important as a coach to be yourself, okay? I've had a lot of colleagues who watch various coaches, they admire them, and they try to become that coach. I'm, I'm in the third, that's who I am. So you gotta bring your own personality in your, in your coach's situation, right? You can't be yourself as a person, right? So um, my staff may coach a bit different than me in terms of style, but we teach the same thing, okay? But I very much I expect certain things from players. I expect them to have respect towards themselves, uh, respect to the families around, around the area, things like that. Like, for example, the kids pick a hold of them, things like that, right? So um, I think uh, I think of change the coach, and I think of like Alex Ferguson, for example, my head coach, who's 30 years. He changed himself during that period of time because when he started at my United, it was kind of pretty much old school. And the grammar has brought up it, right? So, Towards the end, he had Ronaldo, who's you know, um, and I was going to bring in people that have, you know, um, the, the players of jail and their hair, all that kind of stuff, a little bit different environment, right? So he had to adopt it as a person, but he's still strong in terms of deciding this is how the environment is. So I definitely expect a lot from the players, um, but I also give them a lot back at home all the time. Yes? What's futsal? Futsal is a, an indoor game, playing in the gym, and it's got a very heavy ball. Um, or originally in Ur Uruguay, uh, played a lot in Spain and Brazil. So a lot of players, Ronaldo played it, Messi played it. It's a very fast-paced game, right? So if you think of a gym, like a normal basketball gym, that'd be 5v5, okay? Um, I think you'll see that really growing quite a bit in the next 10 years in the US. 
Um, he was got a big splash published, especially in Miami, 